lineups for Jing and Bunny Hopper. Mid range hunter banned away from Bunny Hopper. I feel like the story so far today has been mid range hunter struggling, but Jing banning it away, and he has his own tempo rogue banned away. So, uh, pretty expected ban from, from Bunny Hopper's side, but this is where he's going to do well. It doesn't matter if he has Arch Villain or Farm or not. In the matchups that he's not going to do well, he gains a few percentage points by including that in his deck and is able to go with that late game value. So that's where that's where it comes into play. I do agree with Sotl that in a nutshell, if you're just looking at the decks with no context, I do like the, the version that's more lean, that doesn't run the Rafam, that runs Soul Fires. I think that's overall a better Zoo Warlock deck. Yes. But when you're looking at it from the perspective of a Conquest deck, I think that Bunny Hopper's reasoning is adequate. It's well, not fantastic. It's not even above average. It's adequate. I'm, I'm not going to, to compound on this issue much longer. Uh, long story short, I very disagree. Uh, I think it's you know quite not good. I'm uh, completely indifferent. And I'm going to talk about the lists in particular because we are in a Warlock Zoom uh, mirror matchup, and there's some very important things to note. Number one, Jing has two copies of Sea Giant in the deck. Bunny Hopper has zero copies of Sea Giant in the yeah, deck. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> uh, Jing has no copies of Soulfire in the deck. Bunny Hopper has two copies of Soulfire in the deck. And when it comes to one drops, Bunny Hopper is packed a little bit extra. He's also got two copies of Witchwood Imp. Uh, to just have a thing that helps trade on board and right away draws Arch Villain Rafam in the opening hand. So immediately the question must be asked, what if it loses you one out of every 10 games? Yes, and I feel like his lineup, even if you substitute Arch Villain Rafam for any other card, he loses this mirror matchup on paper. I definitely agree. The Sea Giants are just a colossal measure of counterattack that Jing has during the deck building process. Yeah. When you when you're playing a mirror match where so many minions can get on the board very quickly, and when one player is dominant, what that means is the other player has to have something drastic to come back. Sea Giant is a lot of times a card that can get that job done. And so the real big thing to note is that even though Bunny Hopper I think has uh, the unfavored deck on paper, he does have the luxury of going first in the game and that oftentimes is such a big measure when it comes to dictating the pace it means that he's going to get to trade first it means at the end of the game he gets the extra turns of attacks if maybe he can deliver a lethal blow uh but things from there can get quite ugly i mean just the seeing jing's uh hand right here with the double scarab egg the evil genius and the microtech controller so many minions are going to be available for jinger yeah i mean it's it's just tough looking at these lineups side by side and Jing also has minions that would kind of play into his opponent being able to play Sea Giant 2 with that Microtech controller. But you may just look at these early hands. Jing is going to be able to activate this evil genius onto the Scarab. And Bunny Hopper just doesn't have much follow up. Unless he picks up something to play in the next turn, this knife juggler is not going to get the value that it's used to getting. Now, that being said, Jing can't see Bunny Hopper's hand. Those those two legendaries that Bunny Hopper has could very easily just be cheap, effective minions right now. So Jing has to respect that knife juggler in some regard. If you go with Evil Genius here, what that means is you've lined up a board of one health minions and a 2-2 two -two versus your opponent's 3-2 and knife juggler. Your entire board could get picked off very easily, and your follow-up is a magic carpet, in which case Bunny Hopper will have developed to get that job done. So I think Jing in this spot really has to consider a second Scarab Egg and how he gets the job done afterwards. Now Bunny Hopper is tasked with, if he wants to take care of those 1-1s, one he has to trade first and then hope the juggles go right. This gives Jing an opportunity to get Microtech Controller to perhaps live with extra minions and land a Sea Giant, or even to have Magic Carpet to just be a, a, a threat on board. Yeah. And so if I'm in Bunny Hopper's position, if Jing's willing to take it slow, I'm probably also willing to take it a little bit slower. Because going wide on the board is a liability because the juggles could hit the Scarab Eggs and, and give Jing that big power turn. Maybe just tap, play a Void Walker here, try and load up one drops for the juggles post Scarab Egg poppage. Now, mind you, uh, if, if that's going to be the game plan, what that means is that Bunny Hopper has to kind of open his nose a little bit here to uh, like an opposing knife juggler in a Grim Rally or, or just to Jing being able to jam out a minion and have too much stuff on board at that point. He's going to go with tap, which to me very much spells a Void Walker this turn. And I actually don't think Bunny Hopper can trade in this circumstance if he's going to be doing that. 
Yeah, you just ship it to face, Void Walker, and then uh, try and evaluate next turn. Hope that the Knife Juggler can uh, carry wow. the victory. Wow, that's not good. That is not the result Bunny Hopper wanted. And that was a 40% chance to happen if he made that trade. And being the slow and methodical player that Bunny Hopper is, he, he will take his maximum time at about every given opportunity. I wonder. Jin, considering using the uh, evil genius here as well, I'm quite surprised by that even. Uh, I think it's good. One, it activates Sea Giant. Two, it gives Does that activate Sea Giant? Oh my, forgive me. I was miscounting the minions on board. That is ridiculously good <laughs> yeah and uh he also had the opportunity to i think sea giant is far oh, and away the best at, play so jing uh, his body language to me spells out that he thought he could make a so trade play it or make play a lackey and then play sea giant i don't think that matters but i think that's what he had planned on because now he's just slowed down so dramatically and he shipped the way he shifted in his chair was like a point of realization uh where he just thought he could get an extra minion in play and if that's the case that definitely changes you know the way that you feel about the turn but it, it's pretty clearly cj yeah yeah i mean bunny hopper's body language meanwhile tells you about everything you need to know about the position yeah imagine if you could follow this this up this turn from jing with a couple of sea giants of your own well, here we go. That's a pretty reasonable way to start cutting into the Sea Giant. Uh, you're offered Abusive Sergeant on the Flame Imp for five points of damage. The problem is Bunny Hopper's hand is just Leroy and Archville and Rafam. Like, these are the two least valuable cards in the matchup. So this is the turn where he has to decide on a game plan. I, I do, you do, keep, not, do you keep fighting for board, or do you literally ignore everything and ship it to face, <laughs> hoping that you get Leroy get so far to end the game. Peculiar uh, abusive sergeant target. So if he Argent Squires and Grim Rallies, I, well, he pushes 11. Given the buff, I'm guessing that's what his plan is. Like, why else would you buff the Voidwalker instead of the Flame Imp in this situation? If anything else, I would buff the Flame Imp just for the sake of having more options. The light I think now he's got a Grim Rally. And now I think you have to ship it face. Curious. That is a lot of damage poured into... I don't know, Kev. One -ones. Yeah, I don't know, Kev. That is... I, I, I'm I, very suspicious. Okay, so let's count. He would have pushed 11 to face, which would have brought Jing down to 15. He still would have had a board that Jing would have had to clear through, which would have been quite easy with the board that he had. Is there ever a world where you win from that position? Well, you would have an Argent Squire with a Divine Shield. Uh, your opponent would be at 14 or 15. The, the break point for you would be 10 damage because Leroy Soulfire is... Yeah, and you have a soul fire. You have two copies of soul fire in your deck. Yes, but Leroy plus double soul fire is much less likely uh, for you to ever pick up or for you to ever be able to do well, if you're emptying your hand each turn just to survive. Yeah. So you would have had to reasonably find five more points of damage. I just where do you deal any damage from here for the rest of the game, and how do you live long enough for any of this to matter? Like now you've lost your whole board and you dealt zero damage. Yeah, that was that was my. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm trying to count just for the the sake of tying up the loose ends. I'm gonna go with I don't know, Kev. Yeah, I'm shipping that damage face every time and just saying, I hope I stick one point of damage where my opponent life taps into range, and my next two draws are soul fire, soul fire. I, I believe it was one of the great philosophers at our time. Uh, uh, they said uh, YOLO. <laughs> YOLO! <laughs> Doing the shuffle and everything. I wish they could see that. Because you have to go with this Leroy anyway to now trade. So you've lost all lethal potential. You have no kill on a magic carpet. You have less cards than your opponent. 
and Jing now has initiative. You have an almost 0% chance to win from this spot. Ah, uh, he's on the Arch Villain or Farm plan. Just two more turns and then more turns after that. <laughs> I think this was a mistake from Bunny Hopper. Quite a, quite a rare one at that. I mean, I think about this year for Bunny Hopper. It, he had two championship appearances, made it to the finals of both of them, won one of them. His overall HCT record, 49 and 32. And if you exclude the LAN events and qualifiers that he played in, his playoffs and championship win rate was over 80%. He was 30 and seven in playoffs and championships. That's, that's kind of really where it counts. He's only lost seven matches in all of HCT throughout throughout uh, 2018. Yeah, and you I, can move that up to 31 and seven because he won his first match of the World Championship. And, and he's not a player that's had, you know, any shortage of camera time. And, and in all my time watching Bunny Hopper, I don't think that I've really seen him make things that I would consider philosophically incorrect plays, like fundamental. And this is the first one. Ah, time to get more juice for the Rafam. Mmm, Rafam juice. <laughs> the worst kind of juice. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. It tastes like grapefruit. It tastes like grapefruit, and oftentimes whoever gives you the juice kills you before you're ever, ever able to drink it. Yeah. By the way, it costs like $8 a bottle. <laughs> yeah. If you're paying $8 for grapefruit, you are getting scammed in so many possible ways. But it's organic. <laughs> Touche. Put this apple on your head. Oh, grapefruit, juggler. We just talked about this. Wow, okay. I mean, it's just insult to entry at that point that the jugglers are like, hey, here's one to face. Scarabag looks over. It's like, what are you doing? I don't think Scarabag has the ability to look. That's what you think. Just wait till Abusive Sergeant shows up. Yeah, that's a little bit weird just to me. The arms just crack out of the egg and it starts swiping. Abusive Sergeant comes in, get to work. He's like, but I'm an egg. From nothing. That was the sound of arms breaking from the egg and then swiping at someone. I'm just picking Beta Dune and jamming it. Why not? Uh, the only disaster scenario I could think about wasn't even in the format. It was the apothecary that like deals you five when you summon a minion. Oh yeah, the apothecary imp or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember what it's called. Three minute five five deals you five damage whenever you summon a minion. Or wrath guard against warrior. Remember those days? Ooh. Don't get shield slam. Everyone has demons. Possibly the most one-sided zoo game I've seen in a long time. What's the name of that card? Void analyst. Is that what it is? Yeah. Death Rattle, all demons in your hand game, plus one, plus one. Ah, it's got value. It's a Void Walker. I don't think that's the relevant part. All right, let's take a this look. One. This is why it's in the deck, to see what legendaries you get right before you concede. It's a cool animation. Lord Godfrey gets picked up. Doesn't matter. He is dead, correct? I didn't actually do the math on this. Oh, he's extremely dead. He's, There's a magic card in play. He's Apologies. In, he's incredibly dead. <laughs> he's more dead than you could ever even imagine. He's deader than dead. Super dead. Oh, to be hoisted by your own guitard. Your own lackeys working against you. Jing up one game. Pretty critical mirror match, all things considered. However, I think looking at the deck lists, not unexpected. I think that Jing versus the no sea giant list from Bunny Hopper. It'd be tough because. You know, we have four days of play, but if you look at each individual player, their run can end with two matches. It's uh, it's pretty brutal. Their entire year's worth of work in competitive Hearthstone has been for these few moments that they have on stage. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to get into game number two. It's Bunny Hopper on the, the Summoner, Mage. Summoner Mage and uh, Jing on the Bomb Warrior. So Bomb Warrior... Uh, while still, I don't think, super favored in this matchup, it does have a little bit more game than uh, the uh, standard controller, I would say. Um, I'm going to point out a couple things in here because I, 
I will say that I think that Bunny Hopper definitely has uh, a pretty substantial edge, and perhaps even more so than against a standard control warrior list. And one of the major reasons why is that Jing has zero copies of Omega Devastator in the main deck. What? Uh, and that is not an unusual choice, I don't think. I just think it's very, um, it's very risky. Because if you play against big late game Gertie decks, that's really the card that gets the job done. Now, it's not, he doesn't have access to it. He's got two copies of Omega Assembly and, of course, Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, to be able to discover them later on. But without the Omega Devastator in there, you don't have a natural way to do it. Uh, heading into turn 10, you have to discover it. And it's not really the first Omega Devastator that is the big impact. It's the second, the third, and perhaps the fourth afterwards. Like, those are situations that can get pretty tough what to lose. Now? And against Bunny Hopper, uh, brawls are super vital for the key moments that are in this matchup. Shoot. And what, what that means is with just two brawls in here and zero copies of Execute, there are very few ways for Jing to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bunny Hopper if it gets to the late game. Yeah. Reasonable hand picked up for Jing early on. He does have the Dr. Boom. One thing he's missing is a way to deal with an early big threat. Now, he doesn't have to worry about the absolute nuts hand from Bunny Hopper, uh, which is the Book of Specters into Mount Giant on what three, if do. he's on the coin. Do. Uh, but does need to find something to deal with uh, one of those big threats pretty quickly. Yeah. And one of the ways to do that is just by putting on your own pressure. And he does have the coin Augmented Elec into the Clockwork uh, Goblin. I, I will be curious to see if that's the plan from Jing. Because oftentimes when I've tried to play Bomb Warrior aggressively, it goes one of two ways. Number one, it goes brilliantly, and I feel like I play like a genius. Or number two, it doesn't work at all. And the not work at all right now, I think is a pretty tough spot to be in, considering that you didn't see Bunny Hopper use Book of Spectres early on, uh, and that you have a Brawl and a Dr. Boom in your hand. So I think the potential to go to late game and win is much greater than it is just if you have, like, Augmented Elec, the Clockwork uh, Goblin, and then, say, like, Town Crier, uh, Militia Commander, Shield Block. Like, you know that you have these very powerful tools. What? Why not no. play for their strength right now? Sure, yeah. So that's really the question for Jing, because he does have Elec into Clockwork, which is an aggressive start. Yeah. Doesn't have the uh, the trifecta of Coin Elec into Clockwork Goblin into Wrench Caliber. Ooh. Into Seaforium Bomber, because he doesn't even have one of those in his deck. Yeah. I mean, that, that is the juice when it comes to this deck, too. I've played a lot of, uh, of this Bomb Warrior deck, and... How dare you? When I have it stacked to the brim, and I just get that smooth... Coin, two, coin three into three, four, five curve. I'm like, woo! Then you hear a power pass on six, and then the Blastmaster boom on Ooh. seven. Ooh. What to do? Blastmaster boom was actually the regular rare I got from the pre. I'm sorry, the regular legendary I got from the pre order. And I was enjoying the deck, so I just went, ah, golden. <laughs> I already have it. I just need this golden one. Why make six boom bots if they're not going to be golden? That's the question I asked myself. Mm. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> what to do? What to do? Is this augmented Elec worth a Frostbolt? I, I think it likely. I, I think that wasn't a sentence. I think it likely. It is the subject. Okay. The subject is Frostbolt being worth the augmented Elec. I think it likely. I think it good. Well, no, that doesn't work. That's not how English works. I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe English doesn't work the way that I thought it did either, but it definitely doesn't work the way you thought it would, and that's a fact. I think it's shield block. What now? What's the subject there? Why use many word when few word do trick? <laughs> <laughs> Words are for morons who can't understand pictures anyway. Amen, brother. And that's TJ and I in a nutshell. <laughs> what now? That, that is, you know, a pretty unrealistic circumstance that happened on Jinx's side as well as the coin Alec and run into Fire Tree Witch Doctor getting a Frostbolt. Yeah. Really unluckily for the coin usage here. Yeah. Because now all of Jing's game plans are just fighting a turn from behind. Yeah. And the bomb also gets drawn early on. That's which, not good. No, that's the opposite of good. Because even though it's five damage, that... Jing has almost no way to capitalize on that at this point. All it does is take away from Blastmaster Boom being more powerful, which 
for every bomb in your opponent's deck, you get two extra boom bots. Like, yep. you need them to be there leading into that turn. So the aggression also early on opens you to that possibility as well. Yeah. And uh, we're getting to take a look at one of the uh, inclusions uh, that goes a little bit against the grain from Bunny Hopper Summoner Mage, and that's the Arcane Keysmith. Yeah, we've talked a lot about uh, about the Bomb Warrior deck. I do want to talk about Bunny Hopper's uh, Summoner Mage list here as well. The Arcane Keysmiths, uh, he said he relied mostly on Viper to do the deck building for the Mage list, and Viper said it came up as one of the higher win rate cards in the deck. Uh, and kind of looking at it, they also included a copy of Archmage Arugal, the two-minute, two-two legendary mage minion that when you draw a minion, you add another copy of it to your hand. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense because in mirror matches, if this is something you anticipate, the Arcane Keysmith oftentimes finds you uh, something like Spellbender to take away your opponent's Conjurer's Calling. Uh, in aggressive matchups, you have a 50% chance to get Ice Barrier and have eight extra health. I think it's just a, a utility card that offers you something that is pretty unique to the deck. Yeah, it seems like they built it pretty well for the mirror. Even Archmage Arugal is... Uh Kind of like a, a bootleg Book of Spectres. Because uh, oftentimes, the mage list does not deal with mi early minions. They don't deal with anything until they play their own minion. Because they don't play any removal spells. So yep. if you you play that Archmage on turn two, even though you're not drawing a ton of minions, just putting an extra copy in your hand could get you closer to that mountain side. Right? It's just funny Could make to your me. Twilight Drake stronger. It, it could make your Ashen Mage stronger. It's just funny to me that the legendary mage minion that adds additional copies of minions to your hand is the bootleg version of the two-mana epic spell that does that. <laughs> in this specific deck, yes. <laughs> Maybe Archmage Arugal is powerful because of the Book of Spectres. Without it, he's just a 2-2. What to do? Maybe. To like do. the Infinity Gauntlet for Thanos. Whoa, man. Without that, what? Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert on this 40-year-old storyline. <laughs> it's older than we are. Possibly combined. I don't actually know what you're Get out of here. What to do? What to do? <laughs> Just big threat, turn after turn. This is the kind of situation that I think Jing is equipped to handle. It's just minion by minion. I'm looking at a pair of Astromancers that will definitely make a big difference in the game, though. Uh, you know, Bunny Hopper, and last time he played against Warrior uh, in, in his first series against Blood Trail, he tried to force a brawl from Blood Trail's hand with just generic minion pressure, and it, and it wasn't successful. It wasn't until it was too late that Blood Trail ended up expending the brawl on medium-sized minions. There were zero copies of Astromancer drawn in that game. It does a tremendous job of forcing brawl just because it's so many big things at once. Yeah, now they likely won't be that big uh, because Bunny Hopper has just pretty much played a card every turn. So his hand has stayed reasonably small. But 7-drop, 5-drop, or 5-5 or five, five plus, on average, 5-5 five, five is still really good. If he's going to play the Town Crier here, I'm surprised that he would go for the Shield Block first. It doesn't make too much of a difference since he still has three Rush Minions left in his deck with double Militia Commander Darius Crowley. It's perhaps that Rush Minions are actually what Jin wants to draw right now as well. I mean, I'm not going to discount that as a possibility. Two that, Militia Commander, that's true. Darius Crowley. Zilliax, those are the rushes. If you want to draw more rushes on average, then you shield block first. Book of Spectres drawn for Bunny Hopper. That is good. That is a major draw to fuel up for your Astromancers. Now, I'm going to mention the disaster scenario of hitting the th other three spells that are in the deck. That's the only thing that can go wrong for Bunny Hopper right now. Well, Wow. Nothing went wrong. Yeah, that is that is the juice. A big old fat nothing. That is the juice. Spellbender offered as well for to perhaps soak up a shield slam later in the game. Splitting image offered. The splitting image is kind of interesting, but I would anticipate uh, Bunny Hopper's 2-2 getting attacked first. Jing is likely to uh, have a pretty easy time of checking for Splitting Image going the next turn with having two Rush Minions drawn plus the weapon already equipped. Bunny Hopper knows this. Actually going to go with Ice Barrier. Was it Ice Barrier? It was. Yeah. So just valuing the long game, yeah. knowing that this game uh, has the potential to go long. It does have the, have the potential to go long, but I'm not sure if Bunny Hopper... 
actually, I don't know. It's tough to say if he wins in the long game. Now, Jing, because he's playing the uh, true bomb warrior, not the all-in with the Sephorian bombers, means he doesn't have that kind of late-game fatigue options with uh, uh, Aliciano or any type of way to bounce it. Uh, but does have Dr. Boom. A lot of value in the late game. Also, eventually the bombs are going to reach that kind of critical mass uh, in Blastmaster Boom. But Bunny Hopper saying, I'm not going to be drawing quite as fast as G, especially with one book of Spectre's Plate. I guess it's exactly the same. I kind of like the Ice Barrier. Like you're at 25, the Ice Barrier can perhaps relieve one of those breakpoints. No! That can be the difference in winning and losing a game. Yeah. Bunny Hopper was seven cards in hand. Seven's kind of one of those weird numbers for Astromancer. I'm, I'm never really happy with it. Yeah. There's so many misses. There are a few hits, though. Hmm. I mean, I'm going to play it. Yeah. My calculations are flawless. My calculations <laughs> are flawless. Cadgar's in... In hand, not in play. I just want to. <laughs> From here, Bunny Hopper offered the choice of uh, the straight up trade with Darius, which uh, does not look super happy. What to do? What to do? I don't know if you have. Oh, I think you have the option to go base. Yeah, I mean, on board, Darius is not trading into anything. I, I think the difference is that Bunny Hopper just really doesn't want to take damage. And yeah. given the Ice Barrier choice, it's pretty consistent to go ahead and wipe out the minion and, and play for the longer game. You know, with Khadgar in hand, I think Bunny Hopper's got an opportunity to really run away with it, either when he finds a good Astromancer turn with it or when he finds a Conjurer's Calling. Yeah. And this is not the cleanest Dr. Boom turn I've ever seen. You're facing down 10. Now he can take out one of these with the uh, wrench caliber plus the two attacks from the uh, the town crier. And he's got to get the seven mana out of the way at some point. He does have Brawl in case Bunny Hopper decides to go a little bit wider on the next turn. But the rest of his hand's not really doing much. These Omega Assemblies, he wants to wait until that 10 mana. He's got effectively two weapons in hand. So it's yeah. going to take multiple turns to unload those. I honestly think that Dr. Boom, with the double trade, is the best option here. Yeah, and the, the weapons project, to me, is the peculiar choice in, uh, in Jinx Bomb Warrior deck, where you have two copies of Wrench Caliber. Why water that down more? Just for rogues, I guess, but... I don't know. It's cluttering up the hand right now. Find seven more armor. So pretty big alleviation of pressure. And Bunny Hopper's hand is looking awfully similar to his first set where he's got some stuff, but nothing really to do with it. Like none of these give a clear direction to Bunny Hopper, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, he does have the double Astromancer, which he didn't have in that game they were talking about in the first series where he lost a uh, uh, similar matchup to this one. But he's gonna take it a little bit slower Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ast Astro Rift, I, I always feel like it's a pretty reasonable option in the slow matchups yeah. because it can just, it can hit some very large, valuable minions that you typically can't run in the main deck. Now, it, it can also do the opposite, but I would say typically this pans out a little bit better uh, than it does for us. Best of Rude Hulk. Five minute two seven. Then after one of your minions attacks, give it plus one attack. Yeah. So Bunny Hopper hoping to force out a brawl here. If he does, he can reload with Cadgar plus Astromancer. Yeah, Jing is really now. Jing, I think, is in a really tough spot, where you really want to have brawl post Conjurer's Calling. Yeah. I'm not sure he's being offered the liberty to to save for that much longer though. 
I think he's got to pull the trigger right now. And I think he's throwing the Eternium Rover as well. Ooh, the Eternium Rover can get magnetized onto by the Zilliax, though. It can, but it's not that important in this matchup. It, it also gives you that extra 25% chance to have a good outcome from the Brawl. It's a true story. You know, lowering disaster of the Mountain Giant living from 33 to 25 already sounds appealing. When you tack on a 25% bonus of all three of your opponent's minions died, and you get to gain seven armor, I'm ripping the Brawl. You've convinced me, TJ. Jing has different plans in mind, which right now looks like live to turn 10, which I don't I don't mind this plan. I actually think this plan from Jing succeeds a lot, where he just suffers the big hit from Bunny Hopper this turn, and Bunny Hopper's in a spot where he goes, can I afford to develop that much more? It has to have a hand like Bunny Hopper has in order to really make the development awkward because your last big point of development is the Astromancer. The problem I see with this player from Jing is the whole take 15 thing. I think you can take 15. I don't think that's unreasonable right now. Okay. Now, counterspell being offered, that suddenly makes the weapons project look a little bit better because you get to check a counterspell for your brawl. And the Fester Root Hulk, honestly, I think is a pretty reasonable point of development for Bunny Hopper. It doesn't really expend anything valuable. The, the funny thing is... If Bunny Hopper doesn't choose Counterspell and Jing just unloads a weapons project, he overrides the Wrench Caliber, which he spent almost his entire turn last turn developing. Look at that, Fester Hulk. It's doing good work here. Good job, buddy. You're forcing a little brawl here. Five mana, five, seven. I'll play that all day long. Ooh. Jing also uh, offered Warpath. To use that instead. I think in Jinx spot, if you override your own wrench caliber, you don't really care that much. It's all about you have to have this brawl succeed. This would be a good time for a master plan. You get to add three one ones with the hero power. This is the turn. I think I think his brawl save last turn might be a way for him to actually get in this game. Got to play a spell that's not Brawl first, though. <laughs> Wise, I think. Yeah, Warpath can uh, struggle to hit some of the big minions in this, in this deck. So uh, sometimes not the most valuable card. But honestly, I value that Warpath over Weapons Project a lot of the time. I think the issue is if it's not a counter spell. Yeah, and you override the wrench caliber. Well, here we go. I don't know if Jing has left himself the time to attack if there's a minion left afterwards. Does get it off. So now down to 14. Bunny Hopper has Hadgar Astromancer. He saw Jing wait a turn to brawl, which to me can put a read to Bunny Hopper that perhaps Jink does not have another brawl, but he also just saw him use a Warpath to check a counter spell yeah. instead of a, you know, a cheap, useless spell. So it's kind of a toss-up, but I think if I'm in Bunny Hopper's spot, I'm going for Khadgar Astromancer here. So Khadgar Astromancer mm. gives him uh, a copy of a six drop. Sixes are good right now. It, it, yeah. I was thinking, though, it might be valuable to... Hold on to the Cadgar for a con. We must band oh. together, united. That's greedy. It is greedy. It's very greedy. Oh, oh boy. Oh jeez. That's the biggest one. And now Jing is in major trouble. Bunny Hopper must have stuck his almonds in the freezer because that is the stone cold nuts. Petrified almonds. Omega Devastator offered, though. That almost wipes out a damaged Stegatron, which is not very damaged at the moment. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's
that's an appropriate remark from the Mad Genius. Also, the funny thing about this is these damaged Stigatrons are mechs. There's a, a Zilliax in hand. Oh, yeah, for Bunny Hopper. He just gets extra damage. He just gets extra damage. Also protects him against Dynomatic if you were to have that, but... Jing has to have something drastic happen this turn. I, I don't know what it is. The Vicious Scale... Uh, vicious, um, I don't know what its name is. Two mana, two, two. The... Whoa! Devastator the Khadgar! You gotta kill those damage Stegatrons! Those are five twelves! The Khadgar's already done the, the dirty work. You gotta kill the five attack thing! I'm very worried! Couple things here. One, Jing just basically told Bunny Hopper in multiple ways, I don't have a brawl. The first fact was he didn't brawl. <laughs> the second fact was he killed Khadgar because he was so scared of the Conjurer's Calling because he doesn't have brawl. Warrior is a deck. Two, he left a 512 on board that he could have killed. <laughs> Warrior is a deck that you have to do to play conservatively with brawls in these styles of matchups. So even if Jing kills one of the 512s here, it doesn't necessarily tell Bunny Hopper that he doesn't have a brawl. What it tells him is that he feels like he's safe enough to play through a to play through the scenario and wait to brawl. Bunny Hopper here pretty much got the signal that there was no brawl because instead Jing killed Cadgar. If that's a bluff, that would be enormous. And now Jing needs Brawl. Hmm. Warpath doesn't appear that it helps at first glance. This it's looks not. like it has to be some kind of Zilliax turn to try and get that burst of healing. But beyond that, there's not a great way yeah, the, the to clear off this board. The Vicious being expended last turn, the Vicious Scrap Hound, the 2-2 that gains armor, th that's a card that I like combining with Zilliax because it effectively doubles the lifesteal. It's huge. It's massive. And Unity. that was also expended. Jing has no way to get through these damaged Stegatrons efficiently. The Khadgar scared him. He's a pretty powerful mage. I'm pretty scared of him too, but... Does he get anything off here? Yeah, he got a lot of this. I saw a lot of this guy get queued up. I think that's enough that you get to queue up, but Bunny Hopper has Voodoo Doll in hand, so it's just not going to end up uh, well for Jing in that spot. So Bunny Hopper just counting it, making sure. But that's easily 14 damage that he's got. Yep. Bunny Hopper going to tie the series. And I don't think Jing necessarily gets out of that spot if he kills a 512 instead of killing a Khadgar. But killing the Khadgar opened the floodgate. Bunny Hopper, no fear, and you took a lot more damage as a result. Maybe you get another turn if you kill one of the damaged Degatrons. Yeah. I don't know. Tough game overall. Bunny Hopper going to tie up the series. The only healing you have in the, in the deck is Zilliax. And while you can get a big Togwaggle scheme on Zilliax and chain draws over and over again, I don't think your value is going to match the value of Dr. Boom and you f take a little bit too much damage from the bombs in order for you to have time to end the game because this deck is much slower. It runs the double Gadgetan Auctioneer. It runs uh, the uh, package of uh, thief cards, steel cards. What are we calling them? Burgle cards. Burgle cards, sure. It runs Blink Box. It runns the uh, Hedge Clan Burglar plus the Vendetta. It does not have any weapons except for the natural rogue hero power. It doesn't have the waggle pick. Uh, so it, it, it's not as aggressive of a list that you would expect to see, uh, say, on Ladder or pretty much everybody else in the tournament with Viper and maybe a few others like, uh, like Language Hacker. 
You mentioned Tog Waggle's steam. One mana rogue spell in every turn it upgrades. It starts saying shuffle a minion into your deck, one copy of it. And then every turn it goes to two copies, three copies, so on and so forth. I feel like that is really the tool that sets this deck apart from so many other of the rogue decks, where the other rogue decks are trying to eliminate the opponent as quickly as possible. This one feels to me like it's trying to just stifle pressure and then have some massive turn of inevitability, like a, a bad quest rogue, if you will. Sure, yeah. Mm. And uh, the way this wins against the Control Warrior is oftentimes not in fatigue, but close to fatigue. What happens is you get a vastly upgraded uh, Togwaggle scheme. You play uh, one of the lackeys in High Spare and Togwaggle. You pick the, uh, the Wondrous Wand. Then you shuffle the Togwaggles into your deck. The three mana draw and the make The three mana zero. draw, make uh, all the cards you cost cost zero. And you draw three High Spare and Togwaggles from your deck that you just shuffled in. And you keep doing that until you have a board full of Togwaggles and a bunch of the treasures in your hand and you outvalue. And it's just such a huge swing in the very late stages of the game. And Warrior can't match that value. Yeah. Now, the key is the very late stages of the game. Yes. You have to get there in a, a various number of strange ways with this deck. Uh, it has ways to pressure with Van Cleef and a, and a copy of Questing Adventure in here. Uh, but it's got a lot of removal packed into mm. it. It's got two saps to help play for tempo. The double eviscerate, of course, uh, and the vendetta package that you talked about. But it's also got a copy of Wanted in the deck. Yeah, it's and in I, caps. I, yeah, I have to with say with an exclamation point. Ex I have to say it that way. That's the way it's intended to be said. Yeah, gives you some uh, some good removal early on in the game. Also gives you a coin to couple with uh, Gadget and Auctioneer, or Edward Van Cleef, or to combo the Evil Miscreants. And so uh, that's how it fares against the Control Warrior. But like we said, against the Bomb Warrior, it's much more difficult. And I like this recognition from Bunny Hopper. His hand is not great. By playing Edwin Van Cleef onto the board, he basically does not have great plays lined up for the next couple of turns. But what it does do is it challenges one of the three drops that Jing would have. And based on the mulligan, he kept a few cards. Bunny Hopper knows that him being tempoed out of the game by the early minions that Bomb Warrior has that Control Warrior does not is a possibility. But it's going to be punished by the Shield Slayer. I don't know if I necessarily call this a punish. I, I do uh, like all the points that you hit there, though, uh, with Bunny Hopper's hand and the Edward Van Cleef trying to stifle the pressure from an augmented Alec. Now, that augmented Alec bomb combo comes over two turns from this point. Uh, where Bunny Hopper's going to be able to get Hedge Clan Burglar down. He's going to roll into five mana, and now he has access to Zilliax. Uh, that, to me, is really a big point of defensive measure for Bunny Hopper, where, again, I've kind of said it, it doesn't have a ton of removal, and some of the removal's kind of mediocre. Yeah. Being able to buy that one extra turn, I think, is the difference in Bunny Hopper sometimes having this game snowball out of control and not doing so. And so you might look at that mulligan and wonder why he tossed away Eviscerate. And the reason is because he wants to find the key cards in the deck, the evil miscreants, uh, the, the times where you have the immense hands with Edwin Van Cleef instead of just a, a, a piddly little one. And you also want to auctioneer in hand. You want to find stuff like prep. Start juicing through the deck. Juicing right on up there. I will say against, uh, I, I played probably about 50 games of uh, Bunny Hopper's Rogue List. It was slightly uh, differently teched. Um, I did play uh, a uh, one less copy of Sap and uh, an Acidic Swamp who's added for obvious, obvious latter reasons yeah. uh, with so many uh, aggressive rogues on, on the other side. But against Bomb Warrior, the amount of times that I won the game when my opponent just kind of played on curve with, uh, with good stuff was pretty low. You need a lot of time with this deck. The ways you win are sticking an early Van Cleave, having uh, evil miscreants early on with very strong lackeys. Wow, Jing gonna rip one of the Omega assemblies here. I I'm quite surprised by this because I think Jing's hand is quite strong. Uh, perhaps seeing if there's a Dynomatic in here and that would change his play to maybe a Clockwork Goblin instead of an Augmented Alec. Uh, that, seems a that seems a tad unusual to me. Yeah. Goes with the Boom Reaver. I think it's the best one of those options. I mean, there's some just cards that don't really do anything. Bunny Hopper drawing Leroy as well. Bunny Hopper's draws have not been fantastic uh, thus far. I, mean, I think the Zilliax was pretty decent, but you know, you look at this turn. This is where you wanted to have the Vendetta turn. Perhaps uh, 
you know, something small and eviscerate. Have Evil Miscreant be ready by right now. Instead, it's just play a minion and say go. Tracking is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, you can risk discarding cards, but, you know, the whole point is to help you find a, a key critical thing to, to use. Pick up Medieval Miscreant and have the uh, combo activator already because you played the tracking. Yep. Now that's a hand. <laughs> Dr. Boom's nice to pick up, but I think with the way that this game is rolling so far, Jing doesn't even really need that. I, th I think Wrench Caliber would have been more welcomed right now. The Mad Genius is always welcome. True. I mean, if I can't draw exactly Wrench Caliber, the best card in my deck right now, you know, given this specific circumstance, I'll take Dr. Boom. Whoa. So Jing really valuing having an answer to Gadgets and Auctioneer, I think, if he chooses to go with this, really wants to save the Militia Commander. Did he think he had six mana? No, I don't think so. He mouse over the Clockwork Goblin after he played the Augmented Relic. Yeah, I think he's just going through the steps in his head. Okay. You're a benefit of the doubt kind of guy? Well, the reason why is because last time I saw Jing make a play like that, he shifted dramatically in his chair, and this time he didn't shift dramatically. Context. I think the debate was trade or not trade. Okay. You want to point out this uh, this Turnium Rover getting in there for four. <laughs> One mana, four damage. Solid. Superior Sinister Strike. And at some point in this game, it's going to gain armor. And it's still there. It's still there. Will it ever go away? Only time will tell. Another tough turn for Bunny Hopper here where I'm just not quite sure uh, the direction that he ends up going with in this spot. You know, like, I'm looking at, like, oh, I have backstab, I have tracking, I need to find something to fuel the auctioneer, and I don't necessarily want to expend my Zilliax because I feel like this is one of those games where Togwaggle's scheme on Zilliax could be the way that he ends up sustaining himself. About Leroy. I actually don't mind the Leroy because Fan and Knives is there, and I don't think Leroy is how Funny Hop is going to win this game. Ah, Shadow Step it. Smart. Very smart. So Shadow, we, Shadow Step, uh, you just mentioned it. Leroy's not going to be the way he wins this game. There's not too many other great targets to Shadow Step in the deck. I'm thinking Van Cleef uh, early on in the game to, to gain that additional uh, uh, stats on that. Togwaggle sometimes, Evil Miscreant. Togwaggle sometimes. Uh, Sometimes, very rarely, Gadget and Auctioneer. What now? Just if you need to start cycling through your deck, but you don't want to give up your Gadget in just yet. And to me, this is really the curious question mark about uh, the Elix being expended is now Jing has lost the double shuffle of the of the bombs into the deck and starts draw does another copy of Militia Commander. Like, if you look at the removal stuff that's in here, you have Darius Crowley, you have Dynomatic, you have a second Militia Commander, and you have two Town Criers that can help find those rush cards. I think that Jing last turn was in a spot where he could have uh, opted to save one of the Elix to add additional pressure to Bunny Hopper later on and relied on the natural strength of the deck to be able to take care of big auctioneer turns if they show up. Yep. I'd say right now, advantage Bunny Hopper. I would agree. Does not have the ability to go for the uh, that kind of super late game plan that we that I talked about. It is possible. Oh, I still think it's very possible. I'm surprised that you don't. Things can ramp up quite quickly uh, once it gets to those late stages of the game. Unity, precision, Wow. Is this going to be another shadow step? Or does Bunny Hopper, having seen both Elix, perhaps think he might be in the clear now? Well, the one thing about Jinx Bomb Words, it does kind of float halfway. Because he doesn't play the full bomb package. He doesn't play the c 4 Bombers. He does play Clockwork Goblins. He does play the um, uh, Wrench Calibers. But he doesn't go full in. 
Well, the wrench caliber is kind of one of my fears, though. You know, if this game goes long enough, you're looking at wrench calibers and the clockwork goblins being enough to end it through natural draws. Yeah. Maybe but Bunny the, Hopper was thinking exactly because this is a seven mana turn, Jing is going to feel like it's paramount to play Dr. Boom and actually just gets to pick up a little bit more value with the Silly Accident Shadow yeah. Step. Is that possible? Maybe. That would be like some master level thinking. He does have a PhD in computational biology, specifically multi-scale computational modeling of biochemical systems in the condensed phase. Sounds to me like he could play Zilliax and get an extra pickup with it on the following turn because you know your opponent's going to play Dr. Boom on seven mana and then Shadow Step it afterwards to have it for that ultra late game. Seems reasonable to me. Now, if he doesn't do that, that entire joke is lost. But if he does... Ah. Ah. I think he's going to do it. So the one thing about uh, this rogue deck is it doesn't pressure that heavily. Uh, it doesn't have the, the, the heavy pressure cards uh, like uh, the Waggle Pick. Um, doesn't have extra damage with like Deadly Poison, South Sea Deccan. Does have Evil Miscreants, but those don't often translate to pressure. He does have one Questing Adventure as well, which again, doesn't often translate to pressure. Proof morale from the Blink Fox offers Bunny Hopper uh, a different way to get a lackey. Yeah. Should it come to that? I want to see the Shadow Step here. I really do. No dice. That's a, I think that's a critical turn to look at. I really do. So uh, a couple reasons why he wouldn't play the Shadow Step. One, if he's planning for this game to go, to go super late, it offers additional uh, Lackey generation off of uh, Evil Miscreant, which could uh, give you more uh, treasure generation from the multiple tog waggles that you're going to shuffle into your deck super late. Yeah. Oh, okay. Another benefit yeah. of it is, if say your tog waggle scheme is very close to the bottom of your deck, it allows you to get a treasure to try and play for pressure early on in the game, and then be able to shadow step your your high spear and tog waggle back into your hand to have it later for the scheme as well. So that second shadow step does have a lot of value. This would be a good time for a master plan. And uh, I think Jing is is really going to be slapping himself over the fact that he played that Omega Assembly for one deck on turn four. It's the possible. Way, the way his hand panned out, he probably thought, okay, I dealt with this Edwin early on, which means that Bunny Hopper probably doesn't have that high quality of a hand. I'm most likely going to be able to stick these augmented Elix and start shuffling bombs in my opponent's deck and playing for a tempo. But that was shut down pretty quickly. And I think if he had known that that was going to be the pan out, he would have held on to the Omega Assembly. Well, I think so as well. I'm still quite surprised by it. I don't, just don't know what Mech was really offering at that point. And preparation gets drawn for Bunny Hopper now. Uh, so when does this Auctioneer take place? And it's right now. Right now. So in order to go uh, for that big play that I talked to you about earlier, uh, if he plans for us to go to Super Light, you do need to hold on to the second prep. Do you? You don't have to, but it makes the turn much easier. Well, like infinitely stronger because you get to show, you get to draw three more high spare and tog waggles in that turn, and uh, still be able to keep generating those treasures. So let's say you play lackey high spare and tog waggle, and then you play the three tog waggles that you've drawn off the scheme from the first treasure. If you have the second prep, it allows you to draw three more and play two additional ones that same turn. So you load your hand up with uh, with uh, the the four additional treasures plus one uh, zero-cost talk waggle in your hand. Yeah. Bunny Hopper says a few cards is enough. Dead card with the uh, deadly arsenal. Six-mana warrior card. Reveal a weapon from your deck. Reveal its attack in damage to all minions. Yeah. It's a very easy devastator here, I think, for Jing. Yeah. Can uh, play it this turn, though. Well, he can, but... You don't want to. Yeah. It, it's typically a bad idea. Yeah. yeah I mean, you're one mana crystal away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Defend the 
gates. What gates? I don't see any gates. What job? I don't see any jobs. Not after that comment. <laughs> 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 This is what I mean by this deck not really applying too much pressure. Look at that hand. It's a combo deck. Look at the texture of the hand. Describe it. Leathery. <laughs> it's pretty stylish, but not very comfy. Another miscreant offered also the, the tempo from Vendetta. Usually when offered miscreant, you take miscreant. Back set for hand space. What were the other two? Vendetta and... I don't know. Some useless card. Okay. Cool. Was it Fan of Knives? It might have been Fan of Knives. That'd be good. No, it can't have been the Fan of Knives. He just... No, that's silly. He used the Fan of Knives. He does have two Fan of Knives. I don't know. He was something dumb. Yeah. Big turns for Jing coming up. Just big old stuff. Yeah. The problem for Jing is um, he needs to win the game by killing his opponent. He can't win the game by running him out of resources. Hmm. If Bunny Hopper plays this correctly, he will essentially have infinite resources. Yeah. And Bunny Hopper is not the kind of player you want to rely on to not generate nigh infinite resources. Yeah. The, one of the issues that I, I see right now for Bunny Hopper is that uh, Togwaggle's scheme is somewhere in the bottom half of his deck. If yeah. it's his last card, that's a problem. And see, that's that's kind of where my head's at with the Zilliax. Is like, in, in the situation that Bunny Hopper was in, I felt like he got out of it extremely cleanly. Yeah. Um, and the Shadow Step isn't necessary for the Togwaggle turns to happen. And so because of that, I feel like Bunny Hopper could have used a Shadow Step for the worst case scenario style of play and been totally fine this game. If he had a Zilliax in hand right now, I feel like Bunny Hopper is invincible in this game. I don't know about that play. Use the weak cards first. But I do like getting value out of the hero power each turn. I, I don't think you're in that much worse, worse of a spot if you make the Militia Commander play into the Evil Miscreant, but then play the uh, the Hero Power and trade all of the mechs into the 3-3. Three, three. Now, that kind of goes against what I said the turn before, where Jing needs to kill his opponent because he's not going to win in that super late late value game. Right. Um, I feel like with Boom Reaver in hand, with Omega Devastator and with Dynomatic, you're free to take some you're free to take yeah. some off Hero Powers there for the sake of development. That's just not going to work out, yeah. is what it really boils down to. Bunny Hopper has now found Togwaggle, so all we're missing for this to really come together is the Togwaggle scheme. Yeah, he did use the second prep, though, so that means that uh, Togw High Spear and Togwaggle turn is uh, a little bit weaker. Still quite powerful. Yeah. You got it. And there's the scheme, and that means Bunny Hopper's, I would say, pretty done drawing cards at that point. Yeah, wants to just take time to build up the scheme and have the massive turn with High Spare and Togwaggle. And I think given Jing's hand right now, that's going to happen, and I'm not sure there's much he can do about it. I'm thinking, I mean, something wacky's going to have to happen if that's not going to be the case. Yeah. Now, there, there, there is some uh, kind of wacky stuff you can do with uh, with Leroy Jenkins and uh, the High Spear and Tog Waggle. That one you need the preparation for, yeah, typically. Not necessarily. <laughs> Just goes to the same spot where, like, well, if you have enough time. All right, so here, here's, a, here's a fun way to do it. You, hi, you uh, play a lackey, High Spear and Tog Waggle, get a Wondrous Wand. You play another, you shadow step the, the High Spear and Togwaggle, 
play another Lackey, Togwaggle the next turn, get another Wondrous Wand. Then you Leroy Jenkins, uh, Togwaggle scheme, and play both Wondrous Wands. You draw six Leroy's. They you all draw cost six zeros. Leroy's. They all cost zero. You play. You play all six Leroy's, on top of the Leroy that you just played. Forty-two damage. Yes. It takes some time, but if you have the time, it's quite good. Right. Warrior's really the one deck that offers that kind of time as well. And so I, I think during the deck building stage, that Bunny Hopper and Viper made a pretty brilliant call. Call all things considered, um, against Control Warrior, they have pretty much infinite time. And uh, this is the infinite time I was talking about. So it looks like he's going to go for that. <laughs> Honestly, it does. I don't blame him. I mean, Wonder yeah. Swan, the he just needs uh, he just needs enough time to get that Tog Waggle scheme up to six. Shadow step the Tog. Actually, he doesn't even need to get it up to six. No, he needs to get it up to six because of the Blast Shield. See, seven, ar seven armor, that's a hero power I hate skipping. Three one ones, eh, who cares? Seven armor, I hate missing that hero power. Yeah. That's like two tank ups. This would be a good time for a miss. To Almost. Play. Usually when you get him in bulk, you have to yeah. you know, give a deal for that sort of thing. It, it does feel like when I get to the super late game that. Uh, <laughs> My success rate on the uh, Leroy shuffle is quite low because the, the warrior has amassed a decent amount of armor at that point. So I, I usually tend to go for the uh, the super value with the shuffle on the high spirit togwaggle. I also find it to be a bit of an issue when my opponent uh, plays a seven nine and I don't really have a way in hand to deal with it. Oh, I love that. This would be a good time for a miss. That also limits my time. He could find a way. The togwaggle scheme was drawn. It's only at two right now, I believe. Yeah. It should be three now, because he drew it uh, the turn previous to this one. Is that correct? Because he uh -oh. played the Togwaggle this turn. Well, Vendetta, a pretty reasonable activator for that uh, evil miscreant. So this is probably a Vendetta, evil miscreant. Play a Lackey, play a Togwaggle, get another Wondrous Wand, survive. Survive. And kill. Oh, oh, whoa. Whoa there, buddy. Yeah, that that could have been that could have been bad. Now with playing this togwaggle, he kind of has to go for Wonders One. I was kind of thinking of, does he have the time ever to do like a weird goblet sort of play? But Wondrous Wand is just so good. Well, his game plan is very straightforward at this point. Oh! Oh! oh. Yeah, his game plan at this point is to go for the Leroy Togwaggle scheme, Wondrous Wand. Yeah, and, and this wait, is... Wait, wait, but but... Okay, but what? No, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, 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 but what? Because he doesn't have the second prep, he can't go for that in a turn. This would be a Why not? Because though two wondrous ones cost six. Oh, you mean like in just full on one turn? I think Bunny Hopper's counting on being able to deal some damage here. Still got two eviscerates left in the deck. Yeah, he does have to get through his deck first in order to guarantee that the Leroy's are drawn. That's yeah, a true story. But he's not under too much pressure at this point. He knows that Jinx hand. It's pretty weak just by how he's been playing, right? It's well, I think Jinx is going to be able to swing this board pretty darn quickly. I mean, he's got Shield Slam for the 6-6. Six, six. That's going to boost the minions back down. And then you have Dynomatic after that. Like, you're going to be able to pretty much make some good work of this board. Yeah. There's no Shadow Steps left in the deck. So you don't have to worry about the Miscreant activating again. There's no preps. It's pretty straightforward. Just go face turn here for, for Jinx. Bunny Hopper now is under real pressure. I don't know if he's going to be able to get this done. I, he 
he's losing very bad right now. This is exactly what I talked about earlier on. I feel like Bu Bunny Hopper. The second auctioneer was the one that's really the question mark to me. Did he draw far enough? And then, of course, you know, my head's always going to float on that shadow step on the Zilliax. I think with that Zilliax, Bunny Hopper probably had this game in the bag. So many options. The top one scheme, I believe, is at four. So even if Bunny Hopper was to Leroy Togwag, oh wow, wow, that is desperate. Sap is very nice. Yeah, Bunny Hopper's moving in now. And this is, this is very wise from, I think, Bunny Hopper's side, where he recognizes I'm going to need more time if I'm going to get this done. So i got to spend some mana, i got to deal some damage, and i got to draw a lot of cards. And he's got to have to succeed as well, because you can just still rip Leroy multiple times in a row to get it done. You don't have to do it in one turn. You can do it in successive turns. Yeah, but I believe he still has one bomb left in his deck. He has an, uh, I believe he has an evil cable rat and a bomb. Are those the last two cards? I think he's played the cable rat. Oh, he played the cable rat. I think he did. Hmm. He's got another sap left, right? Yeah, it would have to be sap. Sap and bomb? Sounds right to me. He's going to have to chain together multiple Leroy's, but... To me, one of the bigger ones is that he's going to have to also deal with a oh, Boom Reaver again. Okay, like, Boom Reaver's just going to come down to the situation again. Well, the thing that I'm thinking about is uh, with a three damage uh, thrown to the face oh, here. Well, let's count. Hmm. So his max damage output next turn. 25. Unity, precision, perfection. Whoa. Why not just play the Boom Reaver in that case? I'm almost out of cards. I'm out of cards. Oh, oh it's, it's two, two bombs. bombs. So that's just a mislethal because he had the hero pop. Oh, no, it is lethal. What? Okay, I, I didn't know it was two bombs left. I swore there was another sap. And also, neither of the players knew that it was two bombs left. And to me, that is an illustration of how hard it is to keep your focus on every single thing that happens in a game when you get to this point. I genuinely thought there... If everybody thinks that Token Druid is not a deck worthy of bringing to the tournament, that means they don't respect it. That means they don't build their decks to beat it. True story. Which means that the couple of players that did bring it to the tournament look a little bit better. And uh, Token Druid has been, uh, you know, if you look at deck aggregate sites... Token Druid has been up there as one of the highest win rate decks. It just doesn't necessarily match like pro player sentiment about the deck. Like how a Conquest match works. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why it's a high win rate deck is because one, it's a deck that preyed early on in the expansion on unrefined lists. Because it just keeps building boards and it'll kill you if you have weak turns, which unrefined decks often have weak turns. Two, it's a very cheap deck to play. It's dust cost is not very high, which means there's a lot of players playing it, which means there's a lot of players refining it. So you get those huge sample sizes that allows you to build your deck according to the meta. So I think those are a couple reasons why the win rate might be inflated, as I mentioned, compared to the sentiment of the players. Pitch away Leroy, card draw number one, Leroy. Not from the mulligan, but on turn one. Yeah. This feels reminiscent of the first game. <laughs> Yeah, and Jinx got just a, a decent start. I mean, uh, Acorn Bear into the Dreamway Guardians is pretty much what you want. Yeah, I will be curious, actually, because I think Jing has a possibility of coining out the Dreamway Guardian here. That's really the, the major option for Jing right now. But when yeah. I'm looking at a hand like this and I'm looking at Forest Aid, um, I think that Jing's opening is good enough to perhaps get to turn seven without yep. using coin and then coining out for a state. Uh, that is such a strong turn when you're in parity. If, you, if the game's like an all even, for a state is a crushingly good card. 
So early on already with questions. I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, this could test the board so nicely. Also, this is a matchup that's about the board, right? Uh, Zoo Warlock can tend to run away with boards very quickly. And if you can chop down a board of a token druid, they struggle. Because pretty much half the cards in their deck rely on them already having a board. That Voidwalker is a nice draw for Bunny Hopper here. I imagine we're going to be seeing Abusive Sergeant and uh, start mopping up these little one twos. The problem is his follow up. Well, it's, it's a Soul Fire and then tap. I think this, uh, you said it. I mean, the board's, the matchup's all about the board. I don't think that a Leroy or perhaps a random card is going to really be the difference. I think it's about securing board. And with Life Tap, what that means is. If that's the case, do you Soul Fire now? Do you Abusive Sergeant Soul Fire? No, I want a Void Walker. Okay. I want the one three is different. That fights the board. And it fights the board quite well. Talking about the token druid list uh, for Jing in this one. Two copies of Swiper in there. One copy of Starfall uh, included in the list. Interesting choice that I think can help fight an action like this one. And to me, the big one I look at is Archmage Vargoth. Four minute two six in. Uh, it plays a spell at random that you played this turn. Hitting that card with like Blessing of Ancients or Power of the Wild could be such a massive turn. Oh, Magic Carpet. Well, that makes this a lot easier. We're gonna go on a magic carpet ride. Oh yeah. To hell. I got dark quick. <laughs> the problem is magic carpet has zero synergy with his current hand. Well, I, I mean, the rest of the deck is really what you're looking for, right? There's 18 one cost cards, three of those. Five of those are spells, excuse me. This is some critical draw moments here for Bunny Hopper, though. Jing's turn pretty straightforward. The bright side for Jing here is that, let's say Bunny Hopper just unloads a ton of one drops next turn. He's got the swipe to clear up. And if that's what he's expecting, do you just pre-trade this uh, Hench Clan Hogsteed into the Magic Carpet to set up? Hmm. I would think so. Um, I, I think that having the swipe next turn is something you're going to consider expending anyway, mm -hmm. even if Bunny Hopper really didn't have a bunch of minions in play. Time waits for no one. He's got to have two of them, though. It's a pretty big tell if he goes for a play like that, but I don't think at this point you care. Oh boy. <laughs> well, things just got quite weird. None of these are soul fire targets, that's for sure. Well, a tap's on the menu. Few still fire targets in the deck. I mean, all things considered, you know, looking at two copies of Belligerent Gnome, a uh, Keeper Still Adris, maybe a Power of the Wild, uh, making a 3 2. Yeah, a very little. Ooh. Which Widow's a pretty good draw. Yeah, which would Imp's uh, very interesting. It's also just an interesting inclusion in the deck from the get go. It makes a lot of sense with Magic Carpet. It does, yeah. Another slow card for Jing. Just got to keep hacking away at that carpet. <laughs> he does. Keep hacking away at the carpet. Eventually, you'll get to turn eight. You can play uh, Forest Aid and then... Really high thread count that carpet is. <laughs> Not those 260 thread count carpets that are like sandpaper. We're talking 800 thread count. Google it. It's a thing. Which would imp? 
one one death rattle give your carpets mm. 200 threads <sighs> I guess the question here is the squirrels, honestly. Like, I, I think that there is some pretty good reason to not play them, given the uh, the blessing in hand. I'm wait for no one. Twin spell, give them plus one, plus one. So on turn five, if you just draw like another poor card, you at least get to make a couple of two-twos that way. Yeah. It's not like magic carpet's really beating down the door, but yeah. you do want to account <laughs> for another witch win, it, perhaps? This is such a weird game because both players' hands have been pretty atrocious in the early <laughs> games. They, like, had a great start. They both were like, one drop, one drop. Board pressure. Trade minions. Hero power, hero power. Hero, hero power, power, hero power. power. <laughs> Do nothing, hero power. Solarium will be nice for next turn on yep. Bunny Hopper's side. Another slow turn, though. Gosh, can you imagine if this was against Rogue? There's no way these decks would win. <laughs> <You> <laughs> these no. So many possibilities. It's like they're fighting with spaghetti. That was the name of my uh, last album. <laughs> Ooh. That's a good way to handle the magic carpet. Get to hear power the 1-1 one -one as well. This is like a really bad arena decks that are <laughs> slapping each other right now. Don't look at the hands. Just look at what's happening in play. <laughs> They'll turn into good arena decks eventually, but right now. More Druid Lodi. <laughs> Doesn't make its way into uh, too many Token Druid lists, but Token Druid's a, a deck that can be teched in so many different ways. It's one of the things I really like about it. I'd say that, uh, that Jig's version is looking quite decent against Warrior, while at the same time having a little bit more game versus aggressive decks. Yeah. Hmm. I think po I Poisonous here one. is the best, honestly, as weird as it sounds. No way! You kill that carpet! I'm not letting that thing stick around. I'm tired of it. Well, the thing about it was, I was thinking to set up for a better swipe. Oh, you're going for, like, the nutso plays. Yeah, because if you rush this in, now you... Ah, I, I mean, I guess it's the same. You give him, like, a better... Ah, eh, no, this is better. Is there really anything big in Bunny Hopper's deck to hit? I mean, we're looking at... Well, I at was thinking, you don't give him anything for the egg to trade into. You poison this over the egg the next turn, and then you uh, swipe away the board that he develops. I'd be worried about Grim Rally a little bit. Grim Rally would be the punish to that, and I think this, one, this play is quite obviously better against that. Spell Lackey offered, so Grim Rally is possible. Nothing. Oh. Hellfire. Sends demons. Pretty nice looking swipe. A Jinx is going to have on this turn. Pretty ugly looking draw that Jinx is going to have on this turn. <laughs> Turn jammed? seven is what's going to be really critical here for Jin, because after this swipe, his hand is atrocious for turn seven. I'm just curious if Bunny Hopper's going to jam the Archvillain Revive I, next I, I mean, I think you do. Well, like, he picked the Hellfire, so he does have... His hand is so bad right now. Yeah. The Jin's at 30. You have, like, 15 more one-cost cards in the deck. Like, I don't, I don't think knife jugglers and... Crystallizer and Argent Squires are going to get there anymore. You've been, you've been stifled. And if your opponent plays the Forest Aid in order to generate two twos, the Hellfire only stops that for one turn. Yeah. I think you're slamming that Arc Thief or Fom right here, and that's the way you're going to win this game. Is this the one in 10 games that it wins? All right, Soddle, I hope you're watching. Yes, yeah, Soddle. All right, he's like, oh, <laughs> come on. If you're not going to play it there, don't put it in your deck. All right, well, it turns out he drew the nuts from Solarium, so. 
Whatever. You do get another turn to play it at least. Yeah. You could play it next turn. From nothing. Power. Oh man. Sometimes from nothing, nothing as well. And four cost cards summons four one one imps. I'm thinking like knife cover. Oh gosh, the turn from <laughs> this is a scary bad turn from Jig. Yeah. Like you're gonna look at this board and go, oh my gosh, I am so now think about that coin that was in question, right? If Jing had tried to fight honestly on board, he would have been behind. I think he would have caught back up with the swipe, mm -hmm. and he would have coined Forest State on this turn. It would have been a different landscape, but given how Buddy Hopper's hand panned out, there Jing was not gonna be under threat really. Yeah, honestly, uh can't foresee that though. The way this game has panned out with Jing pretty much having a dead turn this turn, I don't think Bunny's Hopper's gonna play the Archfallen Reform because he wants that 10 burst damage from hand. What? With Hellfire, you go to turn 10, that's 13 burst damage from hand. He's gonna probably try and put on as much damage as he possibly can this turn. And then on the Forest Aid turn, which is pretty obvious at this point. Oh if Forest Aid isn't obvious right now, I, I just have no idea what would be at this point. Yeah. So he's pushing eight now, pushes him down to 21. He's got 10 burst damage in hand. If Forest Aid is gonna be played next turn, he can expect three damage to be eliminated, which means he's gonna be pushing for six the following turn. He's I, a little bit off, but that doesn't even include the minions that he's gonna play this turn that can get the recurring damage. I know that it's better to probably not play the Arch Villain or Fom, but that's what everybody wants to see right now. Grim Rally gets drawn for Bunny Ooh. Hopper. And he's got the perfect target for the Grim Rally with the uh, abusive sergeant. Oh boy. Which is basically only in the deck for its battle cry. And, and now Jinx just doesn't have time to play the Forest save because he's gonna die. Grim Rally is the draw that Bunny Hopper has been looking for for quite some time. And the turn seven for Jing is what gave Bunny Hopper this real opportunity. Without this, he would have had to pay so much respect to board. What? Ah, feed the circle oh, and then okay, go okay, okay. He does push less damage this way. Does he still set up for lethal? That's the, the person in hand. So I think so because of that. Oh yeah, he's got plenty. Plenty okay, so of damage. He's threatening 14 next turn just on board. Yeah. Yeah, Jing. And even if Bunny Hopper didn't even have burst hammer from hand, Forest Aid looks terrible here. And, and you can see why I said if the board is even. If. <laughs> it's a very large if, and you yeah. had some dreadful looking turns uh, with a bunch of buffs in hand. Only option for Jing is the Forest Aid. Bunny Hopper's going to force game number five here with probably one of the slowest zoo starts that I've seen in a long time. Just a weird game overall. Weird set so far. Everything's been weird. That means Warrior's gonna have to get the job done. Sorry, not Warrior. Rogue. I don't know why I said Warrior. Rogue. There it is. There it is. Bunny Hopper doesn't have Warrior. That's where my head is going. Either way, two wet fish slap each other around and eventually one of them wins. Th that's what it's come down to. And that he, honestly, was, whew, uh, I, I feel like we can't expect tempo battles that can take place. There is no SI7 agent in Bunny Hopper's deck. Nope. But does have uh, double Phantom Knives, which does help, uh, at least against the early boards. Once the Force Aid comes down, all bets are off. Are you keeping this cable rat? Second versus Token Druid? I don't know. That doesn't I, feel like a keep. What are you looking for? Miscreant? It's pretty similar to Miscreant. No, it's not. It kind of is. It's a 1-1. One, one. True. Second Phantom Knives. Edwin. Questing Adventurer. Yeah, I'm throwing it. Okay. If I was going first, I'd consider it a lot more. You know what? I'm going even one step further than throwing it away. I'm going back to my collection. I'm taking it out. Okay. Can't do that. Questing Adventure. Yep. 
Questing Adventure. Uh, I talked about that a little bit earlier, but Questing Adventure, in combination with, say, Backstab Prep Phantom Knives, <laughs> is incredible. Miscreant. Got the Miscreant. Bunny Hopper's looking good in this one. Looking pretty good, especially considering the hand from Jing, because Jing uh, has the Acorn Bear, but nothing to really follow it up outside of the squirrels that it generates itself. It appears hmm. that whatever he does by turn four, he's going to be weak to Phantom Knives. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how these token decks live and die by times, is uh, whether or not your opponent has an initial clear. Whispering Woods is a very powerful card when it goes unchecked. But when it goes checked, it's very different. And Jing's hand once again getting bogged down by cards that are just not suiting the purpose of getting minions in play. But there are a lot of those in the deck. There's a copy of Starfall. There's two Forest Aids. There's two Swipes, two Soul of the Forest, two Savage Roars, two Blessing of the Ancient, two Wrath. Ah! It's a lot of stuff that isn't payoff. You know, like, you, you talked about it. The players had eight days to build four decks for the World Championship after a new set came out and a rotation took place. Your deck's not going to be perfect. But right now, I think the story for Jing's deck is that there are too many cards that don't put minions in play. Yeah. Hmm. With the right draws, I think Jing is going to have a pretty high chance to have a buff card and punish you as a result. But with the wrong draws... That's a nightmare sight. If you're on Jinx's side right now. Yeah, oh, not, boy. Not the best lackeys. Um, but at this point, with the way Jinx's hand is painting out, it's just it's not going to make a difference. He's going to drop this Whispering Woods next turn, hoping that it sticks to be able to follow it up with Blessing of the Ancients. But it's just going to get Phantom Knives away, and he's going to be one, two, two, one sad, sad man. I think you got to contemplate killing the Miscreant this turn, as awful as that sounds. Or you have to contemplate Savage Roaring here and going face or using a Blessing in a weird way to try to make the kill on Bunny Hopper's side awkward. Hmm. You have to spend some mana this turn on something other than a Hero Power, though. You cannot spend four mana on a Hero Power to expect to win this game. I think the Savage Roar might be the play. The reason I like the twin spell is because it keeps a card in your hand for Whispering Woods. Well, by Savatory, you put two additional cards in your hand with the uh, uh, squirrels. Yikes. For clarity, I was probably going face it by Savatory. The bunny hopper now is in a fan. Fantastic spot. I mean, right now, you're just questing backstab. Force him to have removal for it. I don't even know if you need to backstab. I really... Like, 2-2 two -two is the same oh thing gosh. as the other sizes right now. Because the only clear cards are Wrath and Swipe. Well, he could Savage Roar. Could Savage Roar. But if my opponent wants to Savage Roar that and I play Burglar into their 1-1... One -one, Give me a quest. I think it's All enough. Right, fair point. And the question is, does Jing swipe this? And I don't think you ever swipe or, this. Or Savage Roar. I mean, either one of those is an acceptable form, but I just don't, yeah, don't think you're going to win that way. Yeah. Now, the Whispering Woods on turn five does offer a greater potential power spike with if it doesn't get Phantom Knives away, you have double Savage Roar. But I think if the Whispering Woods sticks, you're going to win the game anyway. All right. So let's, let's think about it from Jing's perspective. So Bunny Hopper kept uh, two cards in the mulligan, both of which he has not played. He drew the evil miscreant off the top on turn one and coined it out on turn two. You don't keep that many cards in this matchup. I think you're hoping it's another miscreant. You're hoping it's another miscreant, but... It's not. The benefit of this is that Jing knows that he's pretty likely to be able to swipe this next turn. Now, if Bunny Hopper 
is a true madman genius. He backstabs one of the Wisps, then Fan of Knives, then plays a lackey to bring that questing up to five to put it out of range of swipe. Can still lackey plus backstab his lackey. I think in Bunny Hopper's mind, if my opponent did not kill this questing adventure, it's because they do not have swipe. I think if he backstabs that lackey, that questing adventure never dies. It, you're correct. If he, if he, if Bunny Hopper had played backstab this turn, he would win this game. I think the auction ear draw may have uh, kept him from using the backstab. The later this game goes, the bigger chance Bunny Hopper has of losing. Correct. As soon as a forest aid comes down, all bets are off. You're probably not coming back from that. If you haven't developed a, a large enough board, which this deck does not do very well. He's played the one questing that he has in his deck. The only other real pressure cards that he has are Hench Clan Burglars and Edwin Van Cleef. That's it. I'm backstabbing something. Pretty easy burglar turn, I'd say. Ooh, baited arrow. Ooh. Well, I'm taking that. Maybe the Frostbolt is merit just for damage from hand potential. The way his hand is mm. panning out, I don't know about that. I think it's actually quite reasonable and quite good. Yeah, he doesn't have much damage from hand at the moment. Second swipe here, though. I mean, Bunny Hopper's counting for this board to stick for a while. So second swipe and hero power cleans up the rest of this board. <laughs> Look at his hand. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, his turn seven features landscape and blessing of the... Landscaping, squirrel, uh, squirrel blessing of the ancients. Yeah. So something starts to happen there. And then he gets to follow that up with blessing of the ancients, blessing of the ancients. Yeah, this is very possible for, for Jing to get back into this one. If Bunny Hopper just has a couple dead draws in a row here... He has seen both swipes, so he can just play a Gadgetan Auctioneer, and the only thing that kills it is the Wrath. Uh, the Wrath. So there's two copies. Yeah, or, or a combination of some other cards. Like, yeah. it, it's pretty unlikely the Auctioneer dies in that spot. Oh, boy. And now you can tell Bunny Hopper is in a, a spot where he's not feeling the most comfortable. He's like, wow, really both of my boards got cleared? I didn't expect that. I like the Auctioneer play, though. It puts another test to Jing. However, the timing of the Auctioneer uh, may be a little bit awkward. Jing is going into seven mana, and so if they're going to Wrath, what are they going to do on seven mana? Yeah. I think um, maybe just Hedge Clan Burglar and get in a dagger. Next turn, you can follow up with Backstab, something he develops, Evil Miscreant, clean up the board with your spells. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The Bunny Hopper is just, I think, doing the possibilities. Like, could my opponent have just Wrath instead of swiping at any point? Could they have done anything else? Uh, is buying this time on the turn and going into Burglar and Miscreant Ooh. enough? Oh. And Wardruid Lodi Forgot found. about the Wardruid Lodi. That deals with it pretty darn well. He also gets to put some development behind it. Power takes many. I'm actually curious if you want to put development behind it. I guess because your your draws could be so good. If you draw a forest sage, you're going to really having regret not played this. Yeah. And the fact that Jing plays the squirrel, I think, masks a lot of that hand. The fact that he's willing to just give up the 1-1 one -one in the face of a dagger up. Bunny Hopper's in trouble now, I think. I don't know. He picks up this board very easily. And then Jing has literally no development. Jing has development draws, though. Bunny Hopper does not. It's a 1 in 10 to draw Forest Aid. What does Bunny Hopper draw that's good right now? A well, Tog Waggle, an Auctioneer? That's it. Yeah, but the thing is, he has Leroy. He has Eviscerate. He, he, if he sticks just one minion, he's 
just like a shadow step away from winning yeah, the game. That's a true story. I mean, and Jing, Whispering Woods is only is is not very much development. Forest Aid is basically the only card in his deck that gives him substantial development. And that's a, a one in ten. Oh boy. Oh boy. Not the miscreant. I want the miscreant alive. Shadow step. You said it yourself. Yeah, but shadow step. Well, you get to double twin spell this. Yeah, well, the problem is, look at Bunny Hopper's hand right now. He's going to start getting in damage and has double sap to just put two one two lifesteal minions back in your hand. Like Jing running into a turn. Evil Miscreant's good. Hmm. <laughs> it's oh, yeah? The, the whole thing is summed up by the one card put four minions in play. <laughs> oh, yeah? That card is ridiculously good. Now, sometimes it doesn't put four minions in play. But sometimes it does. Sometimes it just gives you uh, discover a spell. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That, who wants to do that in Rogue? And only two minions in play. Ooh, darn. Yeah, I mean, what else? You, what right can you do? Up. Yeah. Uh, smart by Jing to play both the uh, original twin spell version of, of these... Uh, uh, Blessing of the Agents in case he draws Whispering Woods. Yeah, the hand information to Bunny Hopper, I'd say, is close to irrelevant at this point. Yeah. Um, but either way, this game is about to get blown out of the water. Bunny Hopper secured a board. He's got a way to eliminate this and develop behind it. That's enough to win games. Yeah, I think uh, Sap, Eviscerate, Edwin. I think just Sap, Sap, Edwin. What else? There's nothing else in the deck to Sap. Mm -hmm. Sap, Sap, Edwin does set up for lethal. So, yeah. Sap, Sap, Edwin, you push... Uh, six damage this turn. Belligerent Gnome, that's the, there's a one taunt in the deck. Yeah. So you put him down to 17. You have 12 damage on board, plus... That's game. A ton from hand. I'm not seeing a single draw in, in Jing's deck that changes this. Yeah. Token Druid's not going to get it done. I mean, there's 13 from hand for Bunny with Leroy Eviscerate Frostbolt next turn. Yeah. And he's likely to play a 6-6 six, six Edwin this turn. With six damage. <coughs> six damage. Six damage remaining. I just almost died. <laughs> Was it because of the eviscerate usage? You're like, torture! What is he doing? That's what I that's kind of what I was thinking. A bug just literally flew into my mouth. <laughs> He said, shut up, TJ. <laughs> Draws Whispering Woods. But that is a lot of Damahe still in hand. What shall we hunt? He did. Dead indeed. Bunny Hopper. Three games to two over Jing is going to move out of the bracket and on to the top eight. Token Druid not able to get it done. Worked well for him in the first series that he played in this group. But Jing... Gonna have to fight his way through the decider match if he wants to join Bunny Hopper in that top eight. Yeah, not out of the tournament just yet. 